Hello, this is AP Chemistry, Chapter 2, Section 9 on moles and mole conversions. A mole is the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. The definition of the mole gives us a relationship between mass, which is the grams of the carbon, and the number of atoms, which is Avogadro's number. This relationship allows us to count atoms by weighing them. Avogadro's number, which is capital N for abbreviation, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. The equality one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms can be used as a conversion factor like we're gonna do. Okay, and it can be written as one mole over Avogadro's number or Avogadro's number over one mole. Here's the valley of the moles. So this is just a little visual to help you guys see what we're going to be doing in our conversions. So we have moles down here at the bottom. We have grams and atoms on either side. To go up out of the valley, we're going to multiply on either side. The left, we have these little mm, this is not millimeters, but molar mass. So to go from moles to grams, you multiply by the molar mass. To go from moles to atoms, you multiply by Avogadro's number. And then to go down into the valley of the moles, you're going to divide by the molar mass on the left or divide by Avogadro's number on the right. Here are some examples that we're going to do. Okay, so the way that we do these molar conversions is we always start by writing our given. So we're going to have 2.45 and we want to write the uh, unit, M-O-L. And we also usually want to write the element, but I didn't give myself room here. So I'm just going to write it like that and over 1. Here's our conversion factor. And we have to think, OK, we're starting with moles. So I'm going to want mole on the bottom to get rid of those moles. I have to put moles down here. OK, and we are trying to find the number of atoms so atoms are going to go up top, and it's going to be Avogadro's number of atoms in one mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's how many atoms. Ooh, that got weird. Atoms are in one mole. Okay, and so using our calculator, remember that when you're doing scientific notation, do not hit the multiplication button because if you hit multiplication times 10, your answer will be 10 times too big. So use the appropriate um, button on your calculator for this times 10. Okay, and I'm going to cheat and go to your textbook. So in your textbook, they have it written out on page 70. This is example 2.6. And we are going to cancel out the moles and enter 2.45 times 6.022. On my calculator, it says EE. -E, and I'm just going to hit 23 because the EE -E takes the place of the times 10. Okay, And we should get 1. 0.48 times 10 to the 24th. That's how many copper Cu atoms we have. All right, problem done. So that is a very easy mole to atom problem. So in our valley of the moles, we went from down here up to atoms. We multiplied by Avogadro's number. One step, that was it. Down here, it says calculate the amount of carbon. So we want to find moles. So I can automatically tell that moles are going to go on top here. So I can go ahead and write MOL. Mole goes on top of my conversion factor because that's what I want to find. And I'm given lead in grams, and so that's going to go on the bottom. My given units of grams 
go down here. Okay, and we're not talking about actual lead, we're talking about pencil lead, which, which is graphite, which is a type of carbon. Okay, so let's write the number and the units that are given. So over here I have 0 0.0265 grams of carbon over 1. Okay, and in one mole of carbon, there is 12.01. I got that number from the periodic table. Okay, so this is just the molar mass of carbon, which is found on the periodic table. If I go back um, to the periodic table, we can look up carbon and it'll say 12.01. Okay, that's its average atomic mass. So the grams of carbon are gonna cancel, and I should put grams of carbon in one mole of carbon here. Okay, so I have this tiny little mass and I'm dividing it by 12, so I'm gonna get an even smaller number. And the amount that we have, your book has written in scientific notation, is 2.21 times 10 to the negative third. And that's how many moles of carbon we have. Okay. How many copper atoms are in a copper penny with a mass of 3.1 grams? Assume that it's pure. So we're going to start with our given, which is already on here for us. So we have that many grams of copper over 1. And... We are going to have two steps because it wants to know how many atoms and it gave us grams. And if we go back to our value of the moles, there is no bridge that goes from grams to atoms or atoms to grams. You have to go down into the valley and then back up the other side. Okay, There's no way around it. So it's two steps. We're going to divide and then multiply. So I'm given grams. That means I want grams down here. And not just grams of anything, but grams of Cu. And what I need, this is the molar mass on top, are the moles of copper there. Okay, and the molar mass of copper is 63.55. That's our molar mass found on the periodic table when we look up copper and the grams of copper will have canceled and now I have moles but it asked me for atoms so moles need to go away so I'm going to put one mole down here on the bottom multiplying by this other conversion factor and the atoms are going to go on top how many atoms are in one mole Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms atoms give me a hard time with this one okay and moles cancel so I have 3.10 divided by 63.55 times Avogadro's number and we should get 2.94. Make sure you try this with your calculator so that you remember how to use your calculator. Times 10 to the 22nd. CU atoms. Atoms. Doesn't like the word atoms. There we go. That's how many copper atoms we have in this copper penny, which they're not pure at all, especially these days. They're mostly zinc. Okay, last problem. 
an aluminum sphere contains this many atoms of aluminum. So we're going to write our given and atoms, and I should put aluminum, I should add aluminum in there, aluminum atoms. What is the sphere's radius in centimeters? And it gives us the density. So that is a hard one. I can see centimeters cubed. That's a volume. And volume is related to radius. So I can kind of see the path that we're going to take. We're starting with atoms. If we get to grams, we can change that from grams to a volume. And then we can use the volume at the end to find the radius. So let's just take it one step at a time. What needs to go away? atoms. Okay, let's just put AT for atoms. And I have how many atoms in one mole? That's the only thing we can do with atoms, basically. Let's say how many of them there are in one mole. And it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's how many atoms are in one mole. So the atoms will have canceled. And we're at moles. One mole, because we're not at grams yet. So one mole needs to go down here. And I know how many grams of aluminum there are in one mole. We just look that up on the periodic table. It's 26.98. Six point nine eight grams of aluminum in one mole, and now I'm at grams, so the moles have canceled, and this density can be written as two point seven grams per cubic centimeter, or one cubic centimeter over two point seven zero grams. Okay, so I'm taking that equality of grams and cubic centimeters. And I'm writing the inverse of that. So in one cubic centimeter, one cubic centimeter, I will have 2.70 grams. And that's going to give me an answer in centimeters cubed. So when I do all that math, I didn't leave myself room to write the number, but this one is in your book. And this one is on page 73. And we will get 1.4187. I'm going to put 419. Okay, and cubic centimeters. This part is super fun. I'm going to let you guys do this part or look in your book. So from this volume, we have to get to radius, and you guys should know for a sphere, the volume equals four-thirds, oops, not minus, equals four-thirds pi r cubed. We know pi. We know the volume. We can plug all that in, and we'll have to do the cube root to find the radius. Okay, so if you guys try that one, if you want to check your answer, it's on page 74 in your textbook. It starts on 73, and then the answer is on page 74. Thank you guys. Have a lovely day.